Hello again, this is Cenex, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about clothing folds. And this was an idea that was brought about by, I think, a YouTube comment. So once again, I like it when you guys suggest video ideas. Uh, but anyway, I think I'll break it down into a couple simple things. One is just the basic logic of clothing folds, fabric folds, and how cloth folds. And then the second part might just be talking a bit about uh, common mistakes that I sometimes see and stuff like that. Uh, but as you can see here, I constructed a few figures, four figures, uh, just for my mind in varying states of twistiness. So I got one that's very plain and I made a one that's slightly more twisty. And then this one's just craziness. And I just kind of folded limbs everywhere. And um, once again, that one too has a lot of a lot of weirdness in them, and if I approach the clothing logically, I should be able to get it to look okay. Uh, but let me just get rid of that layer real fast and just talk about the basic logic of clothing and how it works. So let's go over what we know about clothing and fabric. Um, obviously, it doesn't have any structure, so it's very lazy. If you were to, say, drop a piece of fabric on the ground, it would probably just kind of crumple up on itself and look like a big mess. But if you were to, say, take one little point and lift it up, um, suddenly you'd have one point of structure, and that's kind of a load-bearing force on things. It's like a hanging point. I call it a lot of things. I don't know what a proper name would be. Uh, but the folds and everything, the cloth just kind of radiates out from that point of structure and uh, once again flops back onto the ground once it reaches the ground. Uh, but you can see how the folds are running away from that one point. They don't want to have any part of it. They just want to be lazy and lie around on the ground. Um, so let's take another example and say we have a clothespin here and a clothespin here and this is going to be our um, sheet that's hanging out to be drying. So we're just going to draw a sheet here and it's hanging from these clotheslines. Uh, so we got those points there and point there and a little little bit of fold here. Uh, but you can see this has two hanging points or two load bearing points. Uh, so obviously the folds would both radiate out from that both points. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't talk right now. Uh, the folds would radiate out from both of those points in their desperate attempt to get back to being lazy. Uh, but we run into a conflict here, and that is overlapping points of uh, force here. We got folds coming from this one and folds coming from this one. Uh, so what do they do when they meet? They don't crisscross. Instead, we get some draping. So let me just erase those out real fast. Go back to my color. And instead, we get this draping effect. So when we have folds that are overlapping, since it's fabric, it's impossible to kind of have two folds overlapping. So logically, we're just going to have these folds uh, turn into draping effects. Uh, so we have this draping stuff here. And I'm uh, not doing a great job of showing it off. But, you know, whatever. Let's just assume it looks like a properly draped piece of fabric hanging from two points. Um, so that's what we need to know about folds interacting with each other. Uh, but let's go back to this hanging point again, because this is a very small hanging point. These are like little pinpoints. Uh, but what if we have something like a ball? Let me draw a bar. <laughs> Let me see if I could draw a circle here. Uh, probably not. But so we have a ball here, and the ball is just, you know, resting on the ground. And say we have a piece of fabric floating above it, just kind of happily floating in the air. Um, so we're going to drop that piece of fabric onto the ball and what we get will be something that looks more like this. And let me just draw it out. So we got, uh, once again, the folds are going to be radiating from the hanging point. Um, but once again, where's the hanging point, you might say? Where's that load bearing point? Well, it's not a pinpoint since this whole area of the top of the ball is actually bearing the weight of the fabric. Um, the fabric is coming all the way around the top. So there's no folds on the top of the ball. Um, instead, the folds are radiating, it, <laughs> radiating out uh, from below that hanging point or that load-bearing point. So the folds just run away from that point as fast as they can, and it'll look something more like that. 
um, and you're wondering what all of this nonsense has to do with uh, clothing and people maybe and stuff like that, well, it's all kind of relevant. So that's kind of our basic logic that we have, that uh, we have load points that kind of bear the load and they kind of keep uh, the fabric structured and without folds. Uh, then we have the folds that are kind of radiating out from that point, radiating out from that point, and they interact with each other by draping across each other and stuff like that. Um, so the main thing I want to go over, and I think the most common mistake I see when I see people doing folds in clothing, uh, let's just draw an arm here real fast because that's real common. So we have an arm. It's going to be, you know, just bent right here. There's the shoulder. Here's the arm. Here's, you know, a hand or whatever. Um, so how would I do this? Let's pretend that this person is wearing some kind of, you know, tight, uh, long sleeve shirt or whatever. Um, so you may be thinking, okay, well, there's a load point here. But there's also a load point here since the fabric is being pulled from this corner to this corner to this corner where there's also a low point because you know gravity and everything uh, but obviously these this is the main low point and so is this one because you're bending your arm so you're making a really strong kind of structure point uh, so, so there's not so there's not going to be folds that go all the way around this structure point because like i said structure gets rid of those folds so instead of doing our you know folds like this which you sometimes see when people are just doing art uh, the folds go kind of all the way across and they're you know real strong you know real everywhere everywhere uh, but instead we're just going to draw some simple folds that go right in this area so they're kind of radiating out uh, but they're not radiating out so much from this point because we got multiple you know folds going on multiple load points going on so we're just going to keep them simple and have them radiating out from this folding point right here and they kind of want to go to this area. They want to go to this area, but they can't get there. Um, so that's that's basically what our fold is going to look like on clothing. And what I want you guys to remember is that less is generally more. You generally don't want a bunch of folds everywhere. Generally, um, you should go with the minimum amount of folds in a clothing or something like that that you can get away with. So let's see if I could get away with, say, one fold. And no, that looks a little awkward, doesn't it? It doesn't really look like fabric then. Uh, so let's see if we can get away with two. And that's close. I think we could get away with two. We could probably get away with that and say, okay, that looks like fabric. So try to always keep that bare minimum. Remember that fabric is lazy. Fabric doesn't want to do a bunch of stuff. Fabric just wants to, you know, hang around. Uh, so anyway, let's go back to our figures now and mess around a bit. <laughs> so now we get to try our hand at actual clothing. So this is going to be a fair bit more complicated, um, obviously because the human body is way more complicated than just a simple ball or something. It's got all kinds of ins and outs and twists and bends and things. Um, and also clothing is far more complicated than say a basic you know, sheet of fabric. Obviously there's something like a t-shirt which has its own shape. Um, it's a t-shape. <laughs> um, and that has all kinds of factors that will affect uh, clothing as well. So let's try doing a simple t-shirt on this girl over here. Um, so we'll just kind of think about it uh, kind of procedurally, which is kind of the best way to do it. Um, if you try to, you know, logically figure it all out beforehand, it'll probably just melt your brain. Uh, but you'll just kind of tackle it as it comes along and remember that if you don't need a fold, you probably don't want to add it. You know, keep it simple, and then if it looks wrong, then maybe there needs to be a fold there. But if it doesn't look wrong, then you're probably, you know, okay not having a fold there. Uh, so let's just draw out a simple t-shirt. We'll have a collar here. And obviously, since a t-shirt wants to be shaped like, you know, like that, like a T, um, making it curve inward and giving it this pressure point here on the shoulder, um, it still wants to be shaped like a T a bit, so it can kind of bend outward like this, you know, depending on how long the sleeve is. So if the sleeve is super short, you know, it'll probably be, you know, outward like that. But if the sleeve is slightly longer, maybe it's closer to the arm. Or if it's super long, you know, it'll just follow the arm. So let's take that into account and make our sleeve something like that, nice and short, uh, very summery. And that will kind of break up the form of the arm. So that kind of makes the clothes more interesting. At least I think so. 
So we have our sleeves that come out like this. And also, once again, since we have our t-shirt and the arm is coming downward instead of in a t-shape, uh, that will create a collapsing point in the armpit area. So the fabric just kind of collapses on itself and you can probably do a couple fold lines in there. Um, just where it's kind of collapsed on itself because that's where you get a lot of folds where the fabric collapses on itself and has any lacks any sense of structure uh, so there we go that's where we get our folds and then uh, let's see we'll come around the chest area which on a girl this could probably be the widest part you know all around maybe not from the front or you know just from one angle but all around it's probably you know the widest part that will fill out a t-shirt uh, so we can have that going on like that and since that is the widest part obviously it can create that uh, that that load point and you might get um, fabric you know coming outward in all directions from that wide point uh, but probably not you know we're keeping it simple we're trying to minimalize our fold lines but you might get you know some coming in like that and you know coming from stuff uh, so we can think about that but you know bottom line is we probably don't need them so we'll draw our shirt coming down like this and on the other side you know it's nice and simple uh, we can add uh, some collapsing lines because this area below the chest is probably a collapsing area there's not really anything pulling on the fabric uh, so we can have some folds in there if we want them uh, we don't have to though and let's see the chest can depending on the tightness of the shirt we can add some you know lines in here showing that there's you know a collapsing point in between the breasts uh, that sounds weird collapsing point in there so we can have a collapsing point in some folds you know and we can have stuff going on from the shoulder depending on how loose the fabric is uh, but let's just pretend it's not super loose so average t-shirt stuff and I think that should look about right. Hopefully it looks about right. It's kind of hard to tell when you have the body, you know, under it and you can't really see. So let's just turn it off real fast. Uh, yeah, that looks kind of like a shirt. I don't know where this line's coming from. It kind of looks like a strange line. Uh, but anyway, basically that's like the gist of where the folds might be. Um, and you don't even need these folds in here, but you know, something else I'm probably drawing more folds than I need to because this is a video about folds uh, so let's jump on to this guy over here real fast just to kind of while we're still talking about shirts and things and let's give this guy some kind of like karate pajamas or something because he looks like he's in a fighting pose uh, so we'll kind of just make something loose that has a hanging point obviously since its arms extended the hanging points you know coming down from the arm um, so we got his arm extended and we'll just kind of draw this coming back in like that um maybe this maybe he has like a belt type thing on so that will create a collapsing point so the fabric will actually be coming outward it might be having an interesting collapsing point like that um since the fabric's kind of collapsing you know all in this area it's just on complete collapse because it's like hitting the floor when you have a belt you know that's like uh, the base level for everything. So everything's just collapsing right there. Um, so you can keep everything nice and simple elsewhere and have like his arm in here. Uh, but that area is just completely collapsed um, and stuff like that. I can't really see what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, so let's just say that's that's okay. That's that's it for this guy. He's, he's got his loose sleeve and he's got, you know, a collapsing point here and a collapsing point here. Um, so that could be it for his, you know, karate dojo shirt thing. So let's see, what can we do on this person? Let's just do another t-shirt because I'm lazy, <laughs> lazy. Um, maybe we could try something different, but let's just sum up the t-shirt area real fast. So this person's arm is actually extended in the t-shape, uh, but maybe it's bending backward a little bit. It's kind of weird to tell, but you know, there doesn't have to be much of a fold stuff going on here. Um, it can be pretty much, you know, pretty simple actually. The torso might be twisting a bit um, in this direction, this this direction, whereas the body's turning in the other direction a little bit. I don't know. There's a little bit of twist going on. So when you have that twist, it kind of radiates from the back of the shoulder, and you can have it, you know, twisting around the body, you know, in in that kind of fashion, like that, and you know, kind of coming around like that. 
Um, that might be a bit too extreme though, once again. Slightly more extreme than it needs to be because of the video thing. Um, but we can put a little bit of that in there. So and there's like a little collapse where the folding goes outward and like that. And let's see, this part should be interesting. Obviously, the clothing's not going to be as skin tight, you know, and you're not going to get all this, you know, form of everything. So let's just assume it kind of drops off like that and, you know, comes down. And whatever. Something like that. I don't know. Something along those lines. And so this is it, you know, without any real folds added in, just a little bit on the back side. Oh, but it's kind of a weird pose, so it kind of makes it look a bit strange. Uh, let's see, something like that. And this person seems to have large boobs or something. I don't know who drew these, no. <laughs> um, but so we're just going to add in some lines, something like that in this collapsing area, maybe like that, kind of coming off everything. Uh, I don't know if that looks all right or not. Let's see. Oops, let's see. Probably a bit too much with that one, but you know, it can be something like that. Once again, there might be some twisting in here, so we can kind of hint at that again, but I don't think that looks about right. So we're just going to trust our judgment in what looks right and what doesn't. Um, that's kind of what you have to do when things get this complicated. It's just like either keep it simple and be like, this isn't showing enough form or keep it complicated, you know, and then you just keep adding to it until it fi you finally see the form. Uh, so that's what you're going for. And I don't think I've really established the form here. And that might just because of how kind of weird everything is. I don't know. It's it's just such a weird pose that doesn't make sense. So <laughs> it's it's throwing me off a bit. Uh, but let's just assume it's you know it looks better than it does, <laughs> and there's some collapsing going on in this area. But whatever, you know, let's let's move along before we waste too much time on one figure. Uh, so this person over here can have. Let's see, what can they have? They can have sleeves. Let's give them rolled up sleeves though because that's a lot of folds going on. So we're just going to kind of draw some basic sleeves that are longer but they're rolled up so we have basically everything collapsing on itself. So that's when you might get some actual folds going on. So we're going to follow the form. You can see the arms you know back in this direction so we're following it with our you know shapes. Um, and then we're just going to follow the arm back this way and keep it nice and simple. Obviously, we don't need folds like everywhere because this is all kind of the hanging point, uh, the load-bearing point of the body. So let's see. Let's do go over and do the other arm real fast. Uh, let's see. There's a shoulder, and this one can just be going back. And there's, you know, once again, following the form and just doing some simple folds to kind of establish what's going on over there. So I think that might be about right. And there could be a little bit more folds in the elbow area just because it's, you know, collapsing a bit. There's so much uh, bunched up fabric going on. And let's see, what do we got? What do we got? Eh, it's, it's really messy over here. And it probably should be just a lot simpler, but whatever. That's something you could kind of simplify when you kind of polish things up. Uh, so let's see, we got a like a hanging pose right here. The The person's leaning forward a lot, so we're going to have the, the neckline hanging. It's going to be hanging from that hanging point. So it's just going to be hanging like that. Obviously the body goes back this way, uh, but the clothes hangs you know straight down with gravity and everything. So let's see, uh, we have a point here. Obviously we're not going to follow this inward, the shoulder inward, because we have our fabric hanging. Uh, so we're, the fabric's just going to kind of hang down and to the chest area, which is once again a wide point, so that bears some load on the fabric. And we're just going to kind of draw some, some draping. We can do some draping, I think, in this one because uh, there's so much hanging cloth here. Uh, but let's go around this the other side and maybe do some stuff in here. Not too much, let's keep it simple. Uh, that's okay, I think. And then since this is kind of 
lean forward. There's going to be just a ton of collapsing here. And once again, collapsed clothing is where you get, you can just go crazy with folds. So you can just go nuts and add tons of, tons of density in your folds and crazy stuff like that um, all around. And I think that will almost do it for these shirts and things. Let's see how that one looks. Uh, this turns off, and yeah, you can see the form there. It's, you know, this the one, the third one's a bit, you know, probably the weirdest one, and doesn't really show the form enough. Um, and I don't know quite how to fix that, but whatever. Uh, the rest of them show off the form of the body. You can tell that there is a human-like shape inside this clothing, so that's good. That that solves our problem. And I don't know what this line's doing here, uh, but. Basically, that, that worked out okay. Those look like clothing folds. Uh, so let's do some pants-like stuff real fast, just to kind of flesh this out, or cover up the flesh. <laughs> um, so let's see, this person can just have some basic pants. Let's give them some jeans or something. Just This is our normal average person with jeans. So the jeans are just going to be kind of tight, kind of follow the body, nothing crazy. Once again, just like this person's t-shirt, it's just kind of following the body for the most part. Um, obviously near the bottom, depending on your cut of jeans, they could be skinny or whatever, but you probably get some some uh, looseness near the bottom. And that is about it. So the main point of uh, tension that we're going to have is going to be along the hips uh, because the hips are once again the widest point um, and that widest point the hips it's kind of like at the bottom of the torso don't think it's like you know up near the top it's it's like right in this area where the hips are the widest um, obviously the hips kind of are up here and that's where like the hips start but the hips kind of go out and into this widest area and that's kind of getting into anatomy stuff um, so that's our widest area. So that's where the most tension is. So we're, we can just kind of draw stuff out toward that tension, um, f starting from this like collapsed point where the fabric is kind of bunched up and stuff like that. So let me see what's going on there. And that looks a way, way too much folding going on, but you know, that seems about par for the course today. Uh, let's just keep it simple. Uh, you know, you don't really need it much of anything, so let's just, you know, leave it nice and easy. Whatever. Something like that. Um, and actually, because there's, like, tension, you can assume, like, how big someone's butt is by how much, like, tension's going on here, and there's a lot of, you know, stuff going on in the back. There might be a lot of tension being pulled, and you could have, like, a lot of lines and stuff. <laughs> but I'm just kind of rambling. Uh, let's try something else. Let's see, what else do we got? Uh, we could give this guy his pajama pants because he has his belt up here. Let's say he's got his belt or whatever. Uh, but let's just draw his loose pajama pants, his ninja pajama pants. Uh, so it'll probably be capturing the point of tension on the knee. Um, that's kind of our... He's got his leg slightly forward, so it's just going to be hanging off that point, though. So hanging it from there, and there's probably a little bit of folding because there's a little bit of uh, collapsing going on here. Uh, but let's just say it goes back onto his leg, and he's got a butt here, so we can kind of just draw some kind of fabric being folded underneath. Um, let's see, and then this other leg. I probably made that fabric a bit too tight. I don't know. I'm not keeping it super great. Uh, so this is basically just falling down and, you know, being captured a little bit in here, but not much. Let's see how that looked. Oops. Okay. There we go. Yeah, that looks something right. This guy's like, got his high water pants on. Um, yeah, that, I mean, that's all you need, really. Just know where the folds are kind of falling and stuff like that. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I don't want to mess with it too much. Kind of looks like something out of like a like the 70s or something. <laughs> uh, so let's see what's this person got. 
I don't even know. This person could be wearing shorts for all I know. So they got shorts here. They're kind of flopping around. And obviously, since the leg is bent up forward, and that's not the natural way shorts go, so there's going to be a lot of collapsing and folding going on there. Uh, but for the most part, um, since her butt's sticking out, there's going to be tension there. So there's not going to be any folds you know, going all the way around or anything. Uh, because once again, remember the ball and the fabric, uh, these tension points, you know, obviously uh, the folds don't go all the way around. They don't, you know, go over that part. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So we got some stuff there. This other leg is just, you know, here to be flopping around. And I think that's, that's probably okay. Does it look like someone's fabric in shorts? Kind of. <laughs> sort of. That's close enough, right? Um, let's see. What else? What else can I do? Oh, I don't know. We can try like something like a skirt or something. Maybe. Maybe a skirt. So that's kind of just going to be folding and nothing really. Nothing really much because there's so much loose fabric in a skirt. It's not form fitting. I don't have to worry about, you know, drawing lines in the crotch area and stuff like that. Instead, we're just going to be kind of hanging loosely. And uh, obviously, since the torso part, um, obviously the shirt's hanging this way, uh, but her, her bottom torso should be pretty much going down into the ground. So I think we're okay um, with just something simple like that. And I drew that on the wrong layer. My bad. Okay. This layer. And I'm just going to give her some kind of simple skirt. And obviously, the fabric follows the leg a bit. So, like that. And like this. Right, right. right. Okay, so I think that's about right. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's all you really need. And then obviously, you can hang some fabric down. Um, just loosely if you wanted, some folding and draping if you want it to be looser. Um, obviously the tension is going to be along the legs that are kind of lifting the fabric up in this way and in this way. Uh, but in this middle area you can have some draping going on. So I hope that made sense. I hope I'm covering stuff that seems useful. It's kind of a difficult subject to really figure out everything about because I never really put much thought into it. It's just kind of you, you kind of just do it when it feels right and don't do it when it doesn't feel right. And I think that's the important thing. Just keep it simple. Don't be doing folds everywhere. Because that's a problem I used to have too. Like you have a folded arm and I would just, you know, go crazy. Like these are all folds, you know, folds everywhere. In the bottom of something, there's, there's folds for no reason and all this crazy stuff that was probably really unnecessary. Um... But I think that's it for this video. I hope that helped a little bit. Um, you know, something at least. I'm sure there's a lot more complicated stuff. But I will tackle that when we're actually drawing, you know, a figure that has clothing folds. And, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it anytime it comes up in the future. So thanks for watching. I will get back to you soon with a new design lab. And hopefully this was entertaining or educational.